okay, we're gonna look at the last two things we've gotta be able to do in order to be able to do everything in modern electronics. Uh, we've talked about diodes rectifying. The last two things we need to do is to amplify and to switch. Well, a switch is really just an extreme version of an amplifier. So let's look at how an amplifier works. Well, here we've got our classic thermionic device with our cathode and our anode, except we've now got a third ode in here, so it's called a triode, but the last one we're going to call a grid, because it's a bit like a bit of a flywire mesh, it's just a, a mesh of, of metal. Um, if that's not connected to anything, then the electrons are just going to go through the gaps in the metal and we're going to have a nice big strong current flowing through this external, through that circuit there. However, the more negative we make that grid, then the more it's going to inhibit the electrons to be able to go through. So it's going to control the amount of current flowing through here. Well, here we've got a speaker. You might remember we made one in motors and generators. Really simple, coil of wire, bar magnet, bit of paper, and you can make a speaker. Except it takes a lot of current to be able to you know, get enough current to pump that cone in and out to make audible um, sounds. Of course, you can actually use the same device as a microphone. Moving that cone in and out creates an alternating field, uh, which, uh, an alternating current, which is exactly replicating the sound waves as arriving at it. But the problem is that that's minuscule. It's, it's a very, very tiny signal. If you fed it into the speaker, you wouldn't get enough current through the speaker in order to be able to do anything. You wouldn't be able to hear anything. So we need to make a big copy of that signal. And that's exactly what this triode device does. Because we feed this signal in to the grid through the microphone. And every time, whenever that signal becomes negative, it's going to inhibit the flow of electrons. When it becomes more positive, it's going to let more electrons go through and everywhere in between. So effectively, in this circuit here, with the speakers concerned, we get a copy of that circuit. So we get a kind of a clone version of this signal, except that it is very, very much amplified. Um, as it happens, it's also flipped as well, but our ear actually can't tell the difference between that. So we've now got a massive signal. This is the kind of varying current that's passing through the circuit here um, between the cathode and the anode, of which the speaker is in series. And so now we've got this varying current um, passing through our speaker, but it's, it's, it's an exact copy of the microphone signal, but it's much greatly amplified. And so now it's got enough current that will actually pump that speaker cone in and out. We've just developed an amplifier. Now a switch is really just an extreme version of an amplifier. If the grid is at zero volts, it's on. If it's at minus whatever volts, it's off. And so a switch is really just an amplifier that's com either completely on or completely off. Uh, but of course an amplifier can be everything in between as well. That's an analog device where it can be everything in between. If it's just going to make it a switch, you know, zero or one, we're talking about a digital device. And so a, a, a triode or an amplifier can be either part of an analog com component of a device, like the amplifier that powers the speakers in your iPod, or it can actually be part of a digital device. And so a triode, uh, which get, later gets replaced with a transistor when we get to solid state devices, this ability to amplify and switch. Now, we've got, now we can do everything, pretty much. We've got resistors and capacitors, they're not much. We can rectify current with a diode, and with a triode we can amplify and we can switch. And now we can do everything that we need to do.